Hot take. These are not steps that belong in your CI pipeline. Why not, you ask? Because lint staged and Git hooks exist. <sighs> Before I get too angry, I should probably explain what pre-commit hooks are. In case you somehow don't know what a pre-commit hook is, it is largely what it sounds like. It's a thing that runs when you do a commit. So whenever you type git commit dash m whatever, it's some code that runs first. So maybe you want to make sure the code is formatted correctly. Maybe you want to run unit tests so you can't commit code that's broken. Maybe you have a strict rule about how your commit messages need to be named and it will block you. But I promise you, if you ever block me from committing for some bullshit like that, you're not going to get a pull request out of me. You're going to get my two week notice. <sighs> so... What's wrong with the CI parks? I don't want to just sit here and say commit hooks are bad. I've done that enough times. Everyone agrees. We need to talk about why this specifically is bad. And I can't believe somebody finally dropped a dumb enough take about Git hooks to force me to revisit my least favorite topic. I am in as much pain as the rest of you guys are here. I promise. I already have a video about this. Pre-commit hooks are bad. But I've also somewhat recently implemented a new rule for the channel, which is if I have a video pre-mustache, it's fair game for me to redo. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. Instead of a two minute video where I briefly explain why this is stupid, we're gonna go for, I don't know, however long it's on the bottom right now, explaining why not only is it bad to use pre-commit hooks, but this particular framing of it is dangerous, irresponsible, and should probably get you fired, and what some good use cases might be. Before we do that, I do wanna highlight something, which is that I am not in any way, shape, or form alone here. Often when I die on these hills and I have these really spicy takes, it's things that are up for people's opinion. Like, is serverless great and should it be used for lots of problems? It's a conversation to have. Is TypeScript better than not having types? Probably, but that's a conversation to have. This isn't. There is no conversation to have here. The point is just wrong in moot and any even somewhat qualified devs going to say otherwise. Thankfully, great devs like Matt are coming out and pointing it out, specifically saying that he hates pre-commit hooks. You should take as much compute off your engineers as possible and put it on CI. Yes. And also, if there's things that are valuable to know before commit, run them in a dev script on the file change. I couldn't agree more. Matt is right here. But that's not why I'm mad. Because even pre-commit hooks themselves, like, should you use pre-commit hooks? Eh, I obviously think they're terrible and I'll turn them off in my repo if you ever put them near me. I will not contribute to a code base that I have to use pre-commit hooks on. Thankfully, there's a feature built into Git for this, dash dash no verify. There's also a feature built in my computer for this, which is that I aliased Husky to dev null because I never, ever, ever, ever want them to run random shit on my goddamn computer. I did see a reply to Matt that explains the one use case for pre-commit hooks that I can kind of get behind. I don't love it, but it makes some amount of sense, which is quickly scanning for authentication credentials that might have leaked into your code base. I've heard a small but meaningful number of people bring this one up, that it's pretty common for devs to copy paste secrets in the development environment to try and test things out, and they wanna make sure those don't make it to prod. I think you have 15 plus separate problems that led you to that scenario where people are regularly putting things in that are secret-like so they can get their dev work done. That usually signifies a much greater failure like much greater failure. But in the case where you're working on a code base where this has happened more than once and you just want to be positive that the dumbest devs on your team that you can't fire for some reason won't make this mistake, fine, a pre-commit hook to make sure you didn't commit a secret is like adding a machine at McDonald's to make sure there isn't metal in your burger before you served it. I don't think everyone needs a metal detector at every restaurant, but if you've run into the problem enough times, fine, have your metal detector for your food. Enjoy it. I hope it helps out. I won't say this is bad. I'll say I wish it wasn't necessary, but if you happen to be one of the devs or one of the teams or one of the projects where this has saved you, I have a lot of questions and I would love to chat about it. But at the very least, this is applying a solution to a problem. And in that sense, I can get behind it. Because if this is a problem that you had and pre-commit hooks are a way to guarantee it won't happen again, you have my vote. But also, as Gabriel just pointed out in chat, you still need it in CI if you have this issue. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Anyways, my point about this was a little bit different because I want to focus in on the CI aspect here because it seems like the author of this tweet doesn't really know what CI is. I've come around. I actually love pre-commit hooks now. Their existence is such a useful way to filter for people I would never want to work with. But more importantly... <laughs> If you do anything in a pre-commit hook and you're not doing it in CI, 
you're incompetent. Because if you're doing something in a pre-commit hook and somebody does no verify or somebody's running a different version of prettier or somebody's doing anything else differently, they're gonna merge something that doesn't follow the rules that you're doing. And now when they change a different file, it's going to run. There are some great examples from Jay Larkey. He had a really good back and forth here. If you don't enforce it on CI, it means it's not enforced. Best case scenario, it means that after you create a crappy PR, now when I touch the same file, I have a bunch of formatting and linting changes in my PR for the stuff that you broke. To which he said, I can't answer that question. Of course not. If, and I know the ways around it, but if all contributors format and lint their stage code in a pre-commit or pre-push hook, I don't have the situation that you refer to. Yes, you do. I had a guy who said the exact same thing. And then I showed him 200 unformatted files in the repo. He said, that's a one-off. I formatted everything and showed him 100 new unformatted files a few weeks later. So it's not a one-off. It's a constant problem because some devs are in environments that don't run pre-commit hooks. Some devs are like me and refuse to use this bullshit. Some devs have a different version of the thing. They haven't done an install fast enough. Also, Mike keeps insisting that this is for corporate environments, which is even more delusional, by the way. <sighs> Anyways, I love Jay Larky's points here. He said exactly the same thing. Corporate environment, by the way. Fortunately, you can't enforce that in Git. So he eventually caved. This is him talking about the person he had dealt with before. I don't know if inflatable is the right word here regardless. For people thinking the pre-commit hooks are fine, here's a quick oopsie daisy checklist scenario. First, I check out main, then I npm install, then I pull latest changes, then I change a file, then I commit my stuff and the pre-commit hook runs, and then I push and the PR fails in CI. Why? I'm guessing you didn't notice that the changes you pulled included a new version of prettier that formats slightly differently. Yeah, so if you didn't install and then you pull, then you change a file and you commit and everything's broken, why? Because you didn't run another NPM install between steps three and five. And if your answer to the scenario is, well, just run an NPM install as part of the pre-commit hook, I'm giving you my two weeks notice. Yep. Andreas asked, what's a good use case for hooks that shouldn't be linters in the editor? My response was, you want the highest paid engineers on your team to quit so you don't have to pay them severance. That's the actual only use case I can think of. But I'm not just going to complain about commit hooks being bad because the point I really want to drive home Regardless of how you feel about pre-commit hooks, which thankfully 99% of decent devs already agree, doing it in CI is a thing 100% of capable devs agree. You need to run your shit in CI. Hooks that only run locally, that don't run in CI, are just foot guns. Because CI is what makes sure our expectations of the code base are being honored when the merge button is hit. So the only way code can make it into main is if we are sure that these rules have been applied and that they've been applied correctly. And there's a lot of things we might lose out on if we don't do that. One of the things that might go wrong is the example that Jay Larky gave earlier, which is somebody was on an old version of Prettier, made a change, broke a bunch of things, and then the next person had to deal with it. Maybe the problem is that they ran it with dash dash no verify. You didn't notice that the code was poorly formatted in the pull request, and now it's the next person's problem. The number of times, even at a code base that kind of tried to solve these problems that I had to deal with random things breaking because some dev had something configured wrong. And now every time I save it diffs against a bunch of shit. So painfully common, not having your hooks, not having your rules, not having your behaviors included within your actual CI guarantees things like what Jay Larky discussed earlier will happen. This 200 unformatted files becoming 100 after formatting them all in just a week. That's the problem. This is just how it works. If you're not verifying in CI, you're fucked. Aaron Powell had a pretty good question here, which is asking if I would consider the linter or formatter pre-commit hooks fine or not, but the editor does it. What if I don't use the editor that you expect? What if I don't have the extensions that you expect? This is a great conversation. I actually think it's good. If I have a dev on my team that commits code and pushes it up for review and it fails the prettier check or the ESLint check, now I know their editor isn't set up properly. Now I can talk with them about that. I can sit down with that dev, say, hey, I noticed in your pull request, you had a bunch of commits that didn't have the formatting right. Is your editor not auto formatting for you? Can we help figure that out? Even if you're using another editor, it's info I should have. Because if your editor isn't working for you and you are working for me, who's your editor fucking working for? It's making it so I am spending more money on your time that could be handled with your editor when you just save files. And no, we shouldn't be building like these weird safety nets around the fact that random devs have a shitty editor. We should be helping them fix their dev environments. 
And if we were to just blindly pre-commit hook everything, we would have a ton of devs that never set up Prettier in their editor properly. And my life is so much better since I set up Prettier in my editor. Like, is there anyone in chat, like speak now or forever hold your peace, anyone across either of these platforms that feels like their life is worse with auto formatting on save in their editor? Does anyone feel like it is worse to have auto format on save? Because to me, it is a lifesaver. It makes me so much happier. And I'm trying to fathom somebody that actually thinks that life is worse since they had auto formatting. I don't like auto save to be clear. I'm saying command S is not a save hotkey for me anymore. Command S is now the formatting hotkey and it just happens to save as well. I'll run a poll. Do you like format on save in your editor? Yes, meh, no, I hate. I do not want it to format as I type because the, the way it would format changes depending on how much I'm typing. So no, personally. I just want to emphasize the point. We have one person who's voted that they hate it. A few that said no, but vast, vast majority here are saying yes. And that's how I would expect this to go. Yeah, the point I'm trying to make is most people are benefiting from format on save. And I would never personally have discovered format on safe if it wasn't for the fact that I filed PRs where formatting was wrong and people pointed out like, hey, is your editor set up right? I was like, no, I'm still using Sublime. I might actually be able to credit my move from Sublime to VS Code on a combination of the better testing tools in VS Code, as well as the formatting stuff being slightly easier to set up at the time. So yeah, it just makes life better. And the point I was making with the reply here is that if you think doing this automatically is better, you're wasting your team's time and energy and losing out on the opportunity to teach them valuable things. So automatically doing this is just one of those things that sounds nice, but is hurting your team. Please don't do this. Please give your team the opportunity to screw up so that you can help them do better. Every dev at your company should have whatever editor they're using set up in a way that it works with them based on the decisions you've made about your code base. Things like a .vs code folder, things like prettier and ESLint rules working inside of Vim or whatever other editors they're using. Like your editor should be helping you build. And with a lot of the things that we're talking about here that are quick feedback loops, like not deleting unused imports or having your imports in the wrong order or not formatting your end lines correctly, you're not having trailing commas. Those types of things should not be things that are blocking your commits. They certainly shouldn't be things that are blocking your pull requests. But the reason they shouldn't be either is they're so simple. They should just happen in your editor. So the, the hot takes I have here are twofold. The first big one is if you're not running this shit in CI, you're losing a ton of useful insights and just begging for things to fall apart. The second more subtle point is that pre-commit hooks are keeping you from having important conversations with your team. And they're hiding information that could be used to level your team up with you. So if you're relying on them for these types of things, you are hurting your team, period. And then there's a third subtle but important point, which is that good engineers don't put up with this shit. Good engineers, when they see something like this, they dash dash no verify. And if from that point they get in trouble, they don't respond by proposing other solutions or doing things differently. They respond by quitting. Like I know I made the joke earlier where I said like the best use case for pre-commit hooks is to get expensive engineers to quit, but I'm not really joking. Like I do actually sincerely believe that. I would absolutely quit if my company stole the commit message button from me. If they stole my ability to run that command in my terminal and have it do what I expect it to, fuck them. Imagine if Google Docs wouldn't let you save until you fixed all spelling and grammar errors. That's pre-commit hooks. Yep. Said it better than me. This is just an example of the pain, how slippery the slippery slope is from James Landrum. Poor dude. Theo, my dude. Broski, brohammer. I've had an absolute shit week dealing with the absolute nonsense I have to deal with on a daily basis. This is the third thing today brought up as don't do it because it's shitty that I deal with every day. We use pre-commit hooks to check for build errors and pre-push hooks to run tests and identify potential PBI, passwords, keys, etc. It takes eight plus minutes to push a pull request. Are you fucking me? Are you joking? Do you know when my best code is written? In the shower. But aside from shower code, do you know when my best code is written? When I just push to change and I open up a new branch and work on something else while I wait for the CI to run. You're taking away my ability to work if I have to leave that repo in that exact state on my machine before I can push. That is awful. That is full context sh shifting. That's your brain being forced to do something else for eight minutes before you can come back. 
That's awful. That's just so obviously bad. And the fact that engineering leadership just lets this shit happen is unbelievable. I hate it so much. And because I think it's important, I want to be clear. I don't think using pre-commit hooks is incompetence. I don't even think adding them to a repo is incompetence. I think using them instead of CI is a fireable offense. I think it means you don't understand how dev environments work and you're making decisions around the process that are going to hurt other people. It's awful. <sighs> and I'm seeing some interesting chats. Somebody said that they wanted to make an argument, but they were assuming that the pre-commit or pre-push would be five seconds or so. Eight minutes is quit agonizing. Yes, yes. Even the people who are pro pre-commit hooks would quit over an eight minute one. Yes, another great analogy. I saw you said this before, Angelo. Pre-commit hooks without CI is like security checks on the front end. Yes, it's like you get an error when you try to submit a form on the client that says, hey, you used a string when you should have used a number here, but then you don't check on the server. I love this point, Emmy. Really, really insisting on guardrails over safety nets is a sign of a pathologically unaddressed skill issue. I, that one's getting fucking framed. Thank you, Emmy, for one of my favorite messages I've ever gotten. That one's going on Twitter. This video is worth doing just for this message. <sighs> yeah. For those who don't know my safety nets guardrails take, guardrails are things like unit tests that make it harder to make a mistake. But it's still possible. You could go under the guardrail. You could go on a path that there isn't a guardrail for. There's a lot of ways the guardrail can fail you. It might make it less likely you screw up, but it doesn't prevent it. Safety nets are where you land when you do screw up. Safety nets are exponentially more important because failures will happen. Things will slip past the guardrails. And as great as some guardrails can be, they will never, ever, ever, ever be as good as the safety net that catches you when you fuck up. So if you don't have good safety nets, the solution isn't build stricter guardrails. The solution is build a fucking safety net. And I'm not even saying don't build guardrails. I'm saying they should come after your safety net is well established because then it's okay if people fall over and you can notice, oh, they fell here because of this. Oh, they fell there because of that. Thankfully, since they all landed somewhere nice, we can fix it quick and then add the guardrail right after. It's just, duh. An example of a safety net, by the way, is something like, the ability to roll back a bad deployment really easily. Vercel has this where I can just go in the list of deployments and say, change it to this one because the last one was bad. That's a great safety net because if something does go wrong and it will, I can now address it quickly, go fix the actual problem and like whatever went wrong and then add guardrails later. But at the very least, the impact of the failure is significantly less. To go back to where we started, if you're using pre-commit hooks instead of CI, you just showed up to that safety net with scissors and started cutting it down. And as soon as people said, wait, what if I fall? Your response was, don't worry, I'll catch you. No, you fucking won't. So yeah, if you do make the bad decision to use pre-commit hooks and you somehow still have engineers after that, make sure you're running the same checks in CI. I thought this was obvious and I hope you do too. One last Theo take to wrap this up. One that should not be spicy. As Killed by Google says, a take as spicy as ketchup. CI and CD are good actually. They are. Peace.